Hallelujah, oh glory, hallelujah, amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am back, your truly Joanna Ward from CBS Survivor the Amazon, and today we're gonna be talking about resilience in fitness and in faith. That's right, it was over 20 years ago that I was able to travel to the Amazon and that's where I really saw the power of God. And I'll be sharing that testimony with you guys after this workout. But this workout that I have for you today is connected to what I'm gonna talk to you about, the testimony I'm gonna give you. It's all about being resilient, even if you have to just depend on yourself in the Lord, that's right. I know that everybody's told you you need a whole bunch of folk around you, but remember, you and God are the majority. So I'm gonna start up with a basic warm up, and then we're gonna hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Bounce. That's what we're doing, bouncing side to side. Now, again, my Shut older up. people, let me tell you something. I love you, and I want you to just go back and forth. If you're in your bed, just go back and forth with me. If you're on your couch, definitely go back and forth. But if you got strength in your body, get up and. I ain't worried about it. About it, about it. And we're going to move our feet here. Even if you're in your chair, remember, you can do that slide. I'm proud of me. Are you proud of you? We're going to take our arms side to side. All right, I'm going to hold here. Yeah, real quick. Keeping those fast twitch muscles together. I'm going to do eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and I'm going to switch. Yeah, don't stress. I ain't stressing today. Don't you stress. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We're going to take it side to side. And stand, and slide, and stand. Good job. Don't stress. Four more. We're going to do those hamstring curls. Three. Breathe. We're going to do the last one. Curl. Right here. Curling up here. Loosen up the hamstrings because we're going to use them and the quads. I ain't stressing today. You shouldn't stress today either. Let's do eight more sets. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Last curls, we're gonna take those knees up just to stretch out a little bit to get ready to do the circuit training we're gonna do today. I ain't stressing today. I ain't stressing today. Stressin today. Y'all shouldn't stress today. Tomorrow, next week, it's not worth it. We're gonna do five more. Four. Three. Two. And last set. Good job. So what I have set up here is a circuit training. And we're gonna start with this back row. You can use socks. You can use water bottles. You can use rocks. You can use pretty much anything that gives you a target and allows you to keep going strong. I got my towel because I'm probably gonna sweat on this one. So facing you guys, I'm gonna start off here on the end. I hope I'm not on camera. We're gonna go here. And what am I doing? I'm working these, this right hip abductor, hip, hip abductor, stepping stand, just going here. And I'm gonna go back to work the left the same way. Same way. Now my seniors, just walk around and step up. Walk around and step up. Walk around and step up. And just walking that, walking it out and moving through that circuit at your level, challenging yourself the way that makes you work because that's what's most important about this fitness. And then the faster people, we can go fast here, kick out and come back, and the reason I have the front, because you're gonna slide up, and we're gonna double up here. Kick out left, and go back. 
Now this is the same thing, except for I'm gonna start off slower here. I'm gonna step like a hurdle. I'm gonna come together, step with that right, just like a hurdler. And right, nice and high. Just give myself a target to make sure that I'm getting nice and high. I'm gonna do the same thing with the left. Nice and high step, bring it together, step, bring it together. Breathe. This is amazing, Grace. Awesome. So if you wanna go fast, you're gonna do it like a hurdler. And we're gonna go back left. <laughs> That's for my advanced people. <laughs> okay? And then we're gonna go here. This is again for advanced. We're gonna come up in the middle, hover over the bar, come up in the middle, hover over the bar, middle, hover, middle, hover, middle, hover. And we're gonna take that back. So again, you can use pretty much anything, box, boxes, blocks, bottles of water, canned goods, it doesn't matter. Something you can use as a target, okay? So I'm gonna hover over this one first, come up in the middle between them, hover over this one, up in the middle, hover in the middle, hover, over, hop in the middle, hover over, hop in the middle, hover over, hop in the middle. So this is also gonna be for the beginner people. We're gonna hop over here, again, making a circle with that hook adductor, going out, out, out. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Nice circle. Again, it's gonna strengthen your hips and thighs and get rid of those saddlebags if you have them. <laughs> and we're gonna go back over them real low for the advanced people. You see the difference? And we're gonna come up, same hop squat, moving that leg on the left, around the hips and the thighs. And we're gonna come up. And then again, we're gonna work on our backward mobility here, because believe it or not, that's where we fall the most. Especially for older people, if you don't do those backwards moves, so we come up, we're gonna step back. Now, if you're watching on television with me right now, you can actually just do this, okay? But just for mobility purposes, and make sure that our bodies are moving at all angles, we're gonna go up and over and back. Up, over, and back. And then I'm gonna run up because I want extra work, and I'm gonna come up and back. Up and back, making those M's. So I'm making a hoop on the M, hoop on the M, hoop on the M, hoop on the M. All right, we're gonna go take it back. This is again to get your posture together, to get that toning in the back. Because what happens is we're constantly walking with this. We're hardly ever using these. So the way that we use them is just go back and up and back and up. And again, if you're advanced, you're gonna come here one more time. You can go up, and instead of just going around, you're gonna come back up and go over. And you're gonna go up and over and up and over again. And up. So, in all actuality, you can pretty much use this setup or your circuit any way you want to to make sure that you just move for Set your timer. Say I'm gonna do any of those things that you're gonna show me. I'm gonna do them for five to 10 minutes. That's all we ask. And you're gonna get fit in all of that, okay? So just remember that you don't have to have this set up, but it would be nice. If you go to PrayPeoplePray.com, you can pick up a set like this for just a few dollars or join awardfitness.com. Either way, you don't even have to leave your house to get it. It'll come to you, okay? So I'm gonna do the higher rises by stepping up and crossing over, up, and I'm gonna cross and over and cross. What is that helping me with? That's helping me with my balance and my posture and knowing how to shift my weight because this is very awkward. It forces me to use my abs and shift my weight back. 
Same thing here. Look at that, that's not a normal move. So it teaches me how to balance here and swing it forward and here and swing. I'm gonna do one more here. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up, we're gonna shift her over to the bot, to the, to the, to the um, cone, over. We're gonna pick up that cone. We're gonna come over, pick up this cone, this one, this cone, this one, this cone, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. <laughs> and so you could even work out while you're cleaning up your workout space. So we're gonna do a couple more. So this is for you advanced people. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do the reverse. We're gonna come here and we're actually gonna use our arms. We're gonna come like so. My, my friends. All right, we're gonna hold it and we're gonna go back. Uh. <laughs> so there's so many things you can do. I'm already drenched, I knew I was gonna be. Anytime you do resilience training, the key thing is to do it to completion. Make sure that you don't quit. So if you commit it to five reps of 50, don't give yourself a break. If I was your trainer, I most definitely wouldn't give you a break. Because you never know when you're gonna be put in a position where you literally have to survive. So when I went into the Amazon, it didn't bother me at all. So we're gonna cool down a little bit here because I had already attacked everything that was hard. I didn't run from hard. And when you run from hard, hard is gonna beat you every time. But if you confront hard every day, it actually becomes easier. And so life becomes easier. And then you're not afraid of anything. You're not afraid to challenge yourself. I'm gonna stretch right here. We're gonna bring it in and we're gonna arch our backs right here and press up. Inhale, exhale, and up. And we're gonna roll our shoulders back. I hope you guys enjoyed that circuit training. I cannot wait to tell you what happened 21 years ago. Some of you guys already know, some of you guys weren't even born yet. <laughs> but I promise it's gonna be an exciting, exciting testimony on uh, after this break. I have to obviously go change. So you know I gotta get cute for my testimony, right? <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that circuit training, but I do believe you're gonna enjoy this part of my story even more. So get you some water, go to praypeoplepraypeoplepray.com pray, pray, or join awardfitness.com. Pick you up a couple of items over there so that you can work out with this video on YouTube. Go to WATC57 and you'll find more videos like these. That's right, they're loading them up online for you. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. Until then, get ready, get ready. We'll be right back. Thank you for coming back after the break. We're back after the break, back after the break, back after the break. Thank you guys again for joining me in that serious workout with the stages and phases of the circuit training. And so again, you can use stones, you can use bottled water, you can use canned goods, you can use pretty much even shoes, anything you would like to, to keep your trail going and keep yourself moving. And so I told you I was gonna come back and talk to you guys about being resilient and about my experience on Survivor. And so the word resilience means to actually literally bounce back, literally bounce back and in our current culture, in our current society, with all of the mental health issues, with all of the things that depress people and oppress people and cause them to be so sad in their souls and their spirits, we need more resilience. Because without resilience, you don't bounce back and life is going to come at you 110 miles per hour and it's not going to slow down. Life is going to continue to life. Trust and believe that. Time is going to continue to tick and you have to keep up with it. And the only thing you're gonna be able to do is be resilient. 
it's been said in the best practices that the best thing we need to do is protect our energy. And, and we're talking about energy like we just use in exercising or like I use in exercise all the time, but even that's limited because you only have so much energy. You're only gonna be able to do so much. And as you begin to get older, you're not gonna be able to jump and run and skip and hop. And so that physical energy diminishes significantly. And with that knowledge, we should invest in our spiritual, mental, emotional, and psychological um, energy so that we can be what? Resilient. And so that's what I wanna talk to you guys about, being resilient, being able to bounce back because life is going to beat you down and you have to be able to get back up. I'm telling you that not to hurt you or offend you or be negative, but to give you a heads up of how life works. Life is not gonna bow to your emotions. Life doesn't bow to temper tantrums. Life doesn't bow to things that are negative. You have to be able to roll with, my mother said, roll with the punches. So long before I was even selected as a contestant on CBS Survivor the Amazon, 500,000, that's five, zero, 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 contestants applied for Survivor during 2002 when I was an applicant. I was selected in the top 16 as the only African-American female, period, on the show. And in order to get to that process, I had to go through a lot of different interviews. I had to leave my son, I had to leave my surroundings, I had to leave everything that was familiar and go out into this strange world that I'd never been into and perform. I had to show up in the place that I'd never been in before. And that's the power of being resilient because you never know where you're gonna end up. My show was actually cast in the Amazon. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know of many other people that have been in the Amazon uh, rainforest, but me in the concessions were on Survivor with me. But what happened in my life prior to that prepared me for the entire experience. A lot of people just, they're like, oh yeah, you were on Survivor, but they don't understand that long before I got to the show at CBS, I was already a survivor. You, believe it or not, are a survivor too. At birth, there was a lot of competition to be conceived when you were conceived and you beat out all that competition. And not only that, but you survived and thrived in your mother's womb and then you actually came out and here you are, beating the odds still. What that tells me is that you and I are at war from birth. There's contention against our destiny from birth. And I want to tell you today that the only way you're going to win against that contention is to be resilient. So prior to being on Survivor, I had already done that. I'd already played basketball, was laid off the team twice. One for having a bad attitude. Yeah, that was me. And the other one, after I had my son at 21, yes, for you religious people, out of wedlock. <gasps> <laughs> but I did get married, but guess what? I got divorced, so what are you gonna do with all that? It doesn't matter, he's 31, he's still here, I'm still here, we're healthy, we whole, and we fear God. So if we focus on what's real and stop focusing on what's not, on our religious boxes that we want, I call it a religious box of routine rules and rocks that nobody cares about, because nobody's gonna fit into what you want it to fit in. The Bible doesn't even fit into whatever your idea is. Get married first, have your kids, and, and I know plenty of people who did that, and great if you did that, yay you, but the majority of us were born in a very extraordinary situation. And I know some people who did it the right way, and they're still not able to have children, so how do you explain that? Let God be God. Let his grace guide you. Be resilient. I would choose resilience over religious routine, box of rocks, any day of my life. And therefore, when you're called on the stage of life and you have to go somewhere where you've never been before, guess what? You show up there because the greatness was never in where you were training. The greatness was always in you. The Bible says this, that greater is he that's in me. In Romans 8, 32, it says that greater is he that's in me than he, she, and they that's in the world. So I took that to the interview at CBS in Los Angeles, California. I sat in front of 12 interviewers and stood my ground about who I am in Christ. Whether they pick me or not, I still have to be who I am. Don't ever forget who you are. Always stand solid in that because that's gonna be with you long after 20 years. And so let's fast forward to being cast out in that jungle on an all-female tribe against an all-male tribe. One of the things they said was, we're never going to tribal council. Well, they forgot about that little black girl from South Carolina State University who had got put off the basketball team, won two MEAC championships, had been divorced, had the baby, all those things that don't fit in the religious box of rocks. I was there and I was looking around like, y'all not beating me because I don't lose easy. I'm a soldier. 
I was born a soldier and I don't need a uniform to know that. It's right here and it's right here. So I go over and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a clip of how the women beat the men and frustrated them to the point where they said the Lord is on their side. Good job. Good job, baby. Come on, baby. Tomaki still on stage one. Jabaru on their last walk. Push it back. Push it back. Push it back. Jabaru, who wants it? I'm sorry, guys. You oh, forgot you something. Oh, that's OK. That's right. OK, oh, thank you. Jabaru, congratulations. Immunity, no tribal council tonight. Three more days Woo! in the Amazon. Yeah. Tom McKee, sadly, not the same news for you. Tribal council tonight. Somebody else going home. I want to lose it every now and then, but hey, this hurts. There's no doubt about it. Stings. Yeah, I'm not sure how evenly matched we are having dropped four out of five challenges. The Lord is on their side. The Lord is on their side. The Lord is on their side. So there you go. You see, those really sad faces were a result of them just assuming that they were going to win because they were men. I don't have anything against men. I have a 31-year-old son. But let me tell you something. When God is with you and he gives you strategy and he gives you strength and he gives you insight, you can beat anybody in anything, especially when you're walking in the power of God. As you guys saw, the, the men were relying on their own strength and they were cutting and chopping and just trying to win and beat us simply by strength and might. But God will give you insight. He will give you strategy. He will give you strength. As Timothy is telling, as Paul is telling Timothy that we're supposed to endure like good soldiers in chapter two of Timothy, um, 2 Timothy chapter two, as he's telling us that we should endure hardship, what I want you guys to understand is military rank is based on obedience. Military rank is based on accomplishing different phases and stages. And so if you want to be elevated and you want to be promoted, you have to be obedient. But how can you be obedient if you don't even understand that you're at war? And there's a war right now going on between heaven and hell, and it's not for your house, it's not for your spouse, your car, your career, or what you want. It's for your literal soul. And before your soul, heaven and hell wants your devotion, your lifetime commitment. And I want you to be resilient. I want you to understand something about being a soldier in the army of the Lord. I want you to understand about being resilient in your life as a Christian. Fear not. I am with you. Be not dismayed. I'm your God. Yes, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you. Yes, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's Isaiah 41.10. That was a scripture that I picked up in a Gideon Bible on the eve of my mother's burial. That's right, during this time that I was selected to go out on this national show, my mother passed away. And I was terrified because she said she was gonna be praying for me. She said, I'm gonna be praying for you. I'm gonna be praying for you. I'm gonna be praying for you. And I knew that she would do it because a lot of the opportunities and favor that I had been shown was because of her prayers. But now that was all gone. And now I had to rely on the God that she told me about. And as soon as I picked up that Gideon Bible, it turned to Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I'm your God. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And if you take the word of God seriously, you will never be afraid of anything, not even death. That's right. You won't be afraid because there's an eternity that's waiting on the other side. It's way bigger than a game that was played over 20 years ago. It's way bigger than a degree that I earned over 20 years ago. It's bigger than any of that. You see, evil will try to replace eternity if you let it in your life. But your job is to make sure that you endure as a good soldier, like Paul is telling Timothy, that you don't give in to the evil. In Romans chapter 1, it says, be not, over, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's what I had to do as the only African-American on that CVS Survivor Amazon. And it wasn't, I wasn't afraid at all. And I wasn't afraid because I'm so big and bad, but my God is big and good. And I love him for that. He's reliable, dependable, and stable. 
And so if you want to be reliable, dependable, and stable, you need to let him reside in you so no matter where he takes you, he can trust you to give him the glory. Oh, yeah, you saw me throwing my hands up. Hallelujah! Oh, glory! Hallelujah! Amen! Do you think worship started there in that jungle? No! It started when God was letting me out of very bad situations that I actually put myself in. The worship and the adoration came because I was getting literally out of hell. I don't know how many of you guys are actually lit in a living hell right now. Probably a self-inflicted one, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, alcohol, bad relationship, financial. I'm not really sure, but all I can tell you is when I was in that living hell, I didn't have to die and go to hell, but I was in a living hell. And Jesus stepped into that place and gave me peace and he gave me freedom. And for that reason, that's why you see me worshiping God, because he's good and he's worthy. So many people are like, yeah, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. But God's throne is surrounded by worship. They sing, holy, holy, holy Lord, God almighty. Worthy is the God that was and is and is to come. It says they don't even rest night or day. It doesn't say they pray or feed the homeless. None of that stuff in heaven. They worship God. So of course, I'm in the Amazon worshiping God. Why? He inhabits the praise of his people. So be resilient. Remember, you were a survivor at birth. Go and check me out. Yes, my game was serious. It was real. Now, you know, it's a little superficial, but back then it was real and life is still real. Be resilient in life. I love you guys. You've been on the move with yours truly, Joanna Ward from CBS Survivor, the Amazon. Check out PrayPeoplePray.com. They're my supporter and sponsor. And check us out on YouTube, WATC57. Bye now.